If you are using Unreal Engine 5 and you want to learn how to model inside Unreal, then this video is for you. In this tutorial, you will learn how to use the modeling tools from creating simple primitive to how to create complex shapes. And you will learn how to model and deform your meshes, how to use booleans, align operations, voxels, how to bake models, and how to UV map, and much more. This video will give you all the knowledge you need to learn how to model inside Unreal Engine 5 without the need to go to any other 3D modeling application. This video is divided into different segments, so feel free to watch at your own pace. Oh, and by the way, make sure you check our store. We have a lot of cool stuff, like a free course to learn blueprints, modeling a castle in a real engine, and of course, a lot of your real marketplace packages made with a lot of effort. So let's continue. All right, let's get started with the most basic thing, and that is, the modeling tools plugin. By default, you won't be enabled to model inside Unreal. So if you see here, I have an extra tab called the Activate Modeling Editor Mode. And this allows me to check all my modes here. And we will check this little by little later. The first thing we need to do is to go to Edit, go to Plugins, and here in Searching, let's just type Modeling. And you will see that the model tools editor mode is here and the version number is here usually it's the beta version so be aware that it can come with some problems honestly it's very stable but just just in case so once you enable this you will need to restart the editor i don't need to do that because i already have it but once you restart it you will be able to see it here Okay, let's create some geometry. Well, if we go to our modeling tools, the first thing you will see is that you have this shelf that allows you to do different operations, such as modeling and creating some shapes, some booleans. And in the right one is the property panel. So let's create something to see. So if I click a box here, you will see I have a bunch of settings here. And once my box is selected, you will see that if I drag here in the viewport, I will be able to create one. Okay, so once I create this and I hit complete, automatically I will have a generated folder here. And here I will have my username from my computer. And here is the static mesh I created. So keep that in mind. Every time you create something here, it will appear in your computer. So there are a bunch of things you can do here and it's very straightforward. First is the dimensions of it. Different shapes will have different dimensions. For example, I can change the depth of this cube and now I have something larger like this. Or I can change the subdivisions. By default, I can put show wireframe you will see the wireframe here but if i change like for example 15 by 15 by 15 you will see that my wireframe is showing all these vertices here so i can have control of how much vertices i want to have like 4 by 4 by 4 or something like that and if this is modeling uh, it's a little bit annoying then just click that off all right so different shapes will have different properties. For example, you have the torus and the torus have a major radius and a minor radius. For example, I can put the major radius like 250 and this will be very large. Or I can change the minor radius to have something like this. And then I click OK. Right, and you can create different kind of meshes before hitting complete. For example, I can create another box, and then I will create another sphere, and then I will click complete. Complete finishes the operation you already started, and this is the same for all the most. So let's take a look at some of the most important ones I personally use. 
first is a box of course and this is very useful and one of the things you should notice is this positioning so with positioning we are able to align the box with the normals of the object for example if i drag the box here you will see that it's snapping here very nicely to my sphere and since the normals are pointing this way our our cube is basically snapping in all the surfaces of our sphere however this is something you may not want to have so another useful property is to click here on align to normal so if i uncheck this you will see that my cube is always look, looking on top right it doesn't matter where i put it it's always looking up and this is very nice and it's very useful too but there is another thing that you can take care of and that is the target surface by default is on the scene which means you will place this object based on the same objects that are already here so if i have a cube here and i put up and i put it here well my floor and i put a cube then of course it will be here but if i drag the mouse here here the cube will be on top of the surface if i want to uncheck this i just need to change the target surface from on scene to ground plane and the ground plane is basically the zero 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 which is this one here so no matter where i put it my object will be always in the same position all right another thing you can do is to change the rotation by default normally i don't touch this one but and another thing is of course change the material you can try to put like a something like this and when it loads it will show but anyways i just want to keep it with a default material so just keep in mind that all these objects are generated here inside my content folder however let's create a new level okay, something like this and le let's not save it and what we will do is to save this level we will call this like modeling tools tutorial okay and here we will have a level our demo map okay now when we create objects let's go to our modeling tools again we have this modeling mode quick settings okay and one of the things is the new asset location auto gem folder will be world relative which means this world let's take a look at what happens now we can click on the box create it and let's go to our content browser and now you will see that in my modeling tools tutorial i have my demo map here and i have generated a folder next to my demo map so basically this is the same structure but now all the meshes will be generated in the same hierarchy that i have my level which is quite useful if you want if you don't want to do that you can put the global folder for example if i create a torus here and click complete then the torus will be created here instead of the new generated folder okay personally i like to use the world relative because i create meshes based on the level i'm working on but you can also use the global if you want to put all your placeholder meshes there or also your current folder for example i can create a new one here called test and in this test i will create this one and now my sphere will be in the test folder so i can create a custom folder for all the meshes that i'm creating all right so let's get back to normal here like world relative this is what i want okay 
and here if you click on this one you will be able to change if you want the auto save like generate but do not auto save so by default let's close this i created the sphere but it's not saved yet so if i close this project and i don't save these objects i will lose the model so what i can do is to go here to the plugins and as a generation mode i can put auto save all right that's one thing i also have the auto generated asset pad i can change this name to have another folder and of course also the asset generation location which is what we had here uh change here but this will change of course the defaults of the creation of our meshes so with this in mind we have a lot of uh, power with us because now we know how to create models here and we can use the primitive that suits more the needs of what we need to do inside a reel so we have the modeling panel here and we have different shapes we can create and within those shapes we can change the properties and we can also change how we position these meshes in the world one thing to notice is that you can see that i created my box in this location you don't need to worry about it since originally when i put it here it will be automatically moved to the origin so the pivot point will be always here in the middle of the of the object so talking about pivot points there is one last important thing to notice and let me change the height of this and and also the height of this one something like this so here you will see that if i click this my pivot point is on the bottom i can also change this so pivot point location can be on the base can also be on the center and can also be at the top so these meshes here this one this one and this one will have a pivot point in different location this one will have it in the middle this one will have it in the top and this one will have it in the bottom if i want to get back to normal just click the defaults here all right so this covers the creation of shapes of the shapes panel so with this you're able to create any any mesh you want and you can choose the most basic primitive such as the sphere and the cube and the rectangles or the planes or the circles and this will be very important for us to model in the future since we will be uh, able to create a shape that fits uh, the best case for us if you want to model like a church or something maybe something like this will be helpful if you want to model something more like a cube then something like this will be more helpful all right so now let's take a look at what will happen if you need to create a more complex shape other than a cube or a cylinder or a torus so for this kind of situation we have the create tab here the create tab allow us to draw polygons here so let's take a look at the draw extrude polygons create static mesh assets so if i click on this one let's take a look at the properties later you will see that i have a small gizmo here all right so notice that i don't need to click on here although i can move it here if i want it uh, i can just click here like this and i can draw here and it will snap to the grid so let's let's put something like this we can keep drawing and clicking until we have a shape we want and it can be as complex or as simple as you want and here before finishing it you will see that the mesh turns white 
at least the light turns white so if i click on this one you will see that now i can drag the mouse and change the height of this so this is a very interactive mode and very it's very useful to create different uh, walls and notice that as i drag here the uvs are also changing so you don't need to worry about the uvs here so once you're satisfied with it you can just click ok complete ok so now that you know this mode let's take a look at some of the properties that we can change here so first uh, the first type is the freehand freehand means that as i click on this i will draw the polygon myself to get something like this and then i will drag again and click again and complete this is freehand on the other hand circle will have a shape that as i click here and drag it you will see that i'm creating a circle here and now i can change the height all right and of course i can also change the number of steps which means the subdivisions for example i can put something like 32 and if i click here and drag again and then drag again the height you will see that i have a much more smooth cylinder compared to this one because i have more polygons so let's take a look at the next one the next one is the square of course click here and you will have a perfect square all right and the next one is the re rectangle so if i click here i just click on two points and the third one you will drag something like this and then you can click again and of course the next one is the rounded rectangle it's pretty much the same you just click here and click here and then you will see that you have the roundness this is very nice actually it's very 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 useful so if i click on this you will see that my rectangle it's very roundy here and i call i can also change the ratio for example something like 0 0.5 and if i drag again you will see that is uh that this is more roundy compared to this one so a lot of uh power here um then you have the circle and the circle with a hole it's very simple you just drag the circle and it will draw with a hole and by default it's 0 0.5 which is basically the same radius here it will apply here or i mean 0 0.25 but i just change it so just change it again and you will have something like this okay so another thing you can do let's go back to freehand uh, because all these are different shapes have different properties for example the steps and the ratio and the roundiness of the circle so if we click here interactive extrude uh, what we will do and this is by default if i click here i will drag again to get the height however if i put extrude to height you will see i have another option i can type the height i want for example 250 and i can put it again here and i only need to click once the height has been automatically generated i don't need to drag it and of course the next one is flat mesh if i do something like this there is no height it's only a plane all right all right so another thing you have here is a low self intersections so by default if i want to do something like this i cannot all right so it will uh only if i click I, it will create something like this and i will be able to create self intersections like for example something like this i cannot finish it so if you want to finish it just click allow self intersections and now when you click here and here and here and here 
and you put it up, you will see that you have your mesh uh, perfectly. All right. So the next thing is the snapping. So the snapping by default is enabled. If I unclick this one, you won't be see any snap. It will only snap to like whatever. <laughs> right so for this kind of mode just hit the snap in enable so what this is uh very important it's uh you can change that type of snap for example you can snap to vertex and here let's try to find something when you see the vertex you will see that it turns yellow if i click on here and then click on here it turns yellow again it means i'm on the same vertex so now i can create another mesh and this ones will be perfectly aligned with the vertex here and that's great so and also another very important thing about this mode is that hit scene objects so by default if i drag here and i want to create something like this you will see that uh, i can go through the objects and that's okay for most parts but if you really want to snap everything, so what you can do is to hit sync objects. And here, if I try to go through, I cannot. So this will allow you to simply snap much more easily without going through the mesh. All right. So once you have this, you have a mesh that is perfectly aligned and this is it for the poly extrude the material and some other settings these are shared between different tools you will see that each tool ha has its own properties but there are some properties that are shared such as this one the material is shared if you go to the material here it's not only in the shapes mode it's on low it's also in the poly truth mode so be aware that some of these properties are duplicated all right so this is the poly extrude mode extremely useful if you want to create some walls so uh, what we're gonna take a look next it's the next uh, ways to create different paths okay so let's take a look at the path truth so the path truth is a little bit different for the poly truth, and as the poly truth is useful for walls, the path truth will be useful for floors or paths. So if you click here, these are the default values. You will see that it's very similar to our poly truth. But now, if we click on here and we do the same operations here, and we close it, you will see that I can change the width of this. Instead of filling the holes here, I will be able to have a border. And when I click once, then I can change the height of this. So this is extremely useful. Like if you want to make some hats, you can, of course, create them and use it for your games. Like you want some players to follow something like this. For example, like you want to go here and then turn left. Okay, and then go, uh, go again here and then come back again to the original position. You can create a path like this. Okay. And also, of course, it's, it can be used as walls if you want. But personally, I like to use it for paths. So the other thing is that you can change the output mode instead of instruction you can put a ribbon so what it will do is basically it will you will change the width of this and it will create a plane so sometimes you may want to use this and of course you have the extrusion and the ramp uh, personally i don't use the ramp uh, um, because it's very hard to see what it does but the structure extrusion now uh, you can change the mode to constant for example uh, the width 100 so when i click on this 
the width it's automatically done here let's try to do it again with another value such as 10 okay something like this and then i only need to take care of the height and if i want to put a constant height i can also do it here for example i can put 100 instead of interactive and now i just need to take care of my pad here and i don't need to click again so this is the pad truth a little bit different from the from the poly from the poly truth right all right now let's take a look at the path revolve this is a very cool feature so if you click path revolve you will see that i have a grid here snap on this plane and basically you have like an axis here in the middle and we will create like a cylinder around this so the way to do this is to basically we will draw the profile so if i click on the points here and this will automatically snap to the grid so you don't need to worry about it so we can just draw a profile something like this okay and if we're satisfied we can just go back here and close it all right so now you will see that i have a shape like this all right so what this will do is to create this shape here and duplicate it and extrude it along a cylinder which is very useful now there are some properties here that it they worth to take a look at first is the revolution degrees if i reduce this you will see that my shape gets cut of course 360 is the full circle but i can go 180 or maybe 90 or just go 160 so explicit steps will allow me to change the number of subdivisions for example i can change here to something like 50 and now i will have a very smooth surface here very smooth so if i want something lower i can go back to 24 or i can just put back to 4 or something like this to create uh, something more square okay then is the long axis let's go back this one to default the long axis offset we can do something like this and it may it may or it may not be something you want but you can do it if you want we can go negative one or you can go zero or you can go one the next is the reverse revolution basically it will be counterclockwise or clockwise so uh really doesn't affect that much and the next one is the uvs for example uh the, the normals i mean so here if you click here the normals are pointing out but if i flip the mesh the normals will be pointing inwards so why would you need to do this is because you can create a level like this just like that and you have the inside and you already have your corridor here which is pretty useful and it's very cool okay the next one is the sharp normals so based on the angle of the normal and you can change the threshold like if it's zero it will be very sharp and if if it's 90 it will be very smooth uh, so if you find uh, the swift spot between sharp edges and flat edges you will uh, be able to just uh, have like sharp faces here and sharp faces here and you won't be able to see the polygons uh, another thing uh, now if we have explicit steps we can also change the degrees the lower we are the more resolution we have here go back to 5 and by default is 15 so you can either use max degrees first step or explicit steps where you can increase so it's the reverse all right so let's move on because we have a hidden property here so if i go here first is the connect uh if i uncheck this one this will not be connected okay 
the next is the revolution degrees basically it just rotates in case you want something specific it can be useful or not in case in, in case you want it is there okay the profile is cross section according to the description of this um if you want to create some square columns such as this one you may want to put something like this so just like that you will see that in my grid i have one step for each column here which is very nice actually so you can create really nice profiles with this and if you unclick this of course you still have the same but you know we are rotating in different direction so if you have like something like six or something it may become useful in the future okay so let's uncheck this uh polygroups we will see more polygroups uh in the future when we go to body model but basically is the way you handle the polygroups here uh, this will be useful for selection in the future okay and the next one is the split not not really something i use personally and of course the well tolerance like for example if i put say something like 500 uh, or 20 is the max um, you will weld these vertices and sometimes you will have like here you, you put like the vertex here and you want to weld it so make sure you play with this okay and of course flip the uvs or in this case the v's only only this part okay so this is the poly revolve super useful uh, in case you can create a column with this I, i'm sure you can already see the possibilities for example i can create something like this and then i can go to my box here and create something like this here let's, let's do something nice just like this okay let's rotate it 40 degrees and make it like this Rotate more 45 actually make this one a little bit bigger okay we're losing time here but anyway so can create something extremely nice with this tool so just uh, this is the path reverb so next we're gonna take a look at this one at the revolve mesh tool okay so let's take a look at the body revolve so the mesh revolve unlike the path revolve requires a mesh to work with this is why this is great um you cannot select this if i click on this i cannot so let's create a box okay now if i create a box and click on this i will have an error it will say this mesh does not have any boundary loops to display on revolve delete some faces or use a different mesh so basically what it's telling you is i can only work with a plane so what you can do here is for example uh put a rectangle here or a round rectangle and put it here just to show what it does and now that i only have a face if i click on poly body revolve uh, you will see that i will create like an envelope around this radius right like it will extrude here and here and here and here and here and it will be 24 times if i want to increase the resolution i can do the same like i did with the path revolve i can put like 50 and this will be much more smooth okay and i can do the same here or like like we did with the path revolve like flip the mesh and sharpen the normals or things like that and also we have the same properties that we had with the path revolve it's just that we're using a mesh now so a very interesting thing about this is that i can use the poly extrude and i can put flat mesh here and when i do that i can basically create like a profile here something like this Let's just put it like this and now that i have a profile i can do the revolve and you will see that here i have 
a profile it's much more interesting cylinder all right so this mode is extremely uh useful if you want to create like complex shapes and you can either draw here and use a mesh or what you could do is to use a path revolve those are valid options so these two go hand in hand and this is the revolve mesh okay let's take a look at the append tool the append tool allows you to combine meshes for example i can create something like this okay and then i can create another one here just like this and i can click complete these two meshes are different objects here however what i can do is select one of those and then select the other one and this will be the first one i choose and i can click on append so there are a bunch of op options here in the append tool that are repetitive across different tools here the first thing is that if you want to create a new asset okay if i create a new asset uh this will delete my previous ones in the editor they will still exist in the content browser actually and they will create a new one so let's try that out click accept and now you will see that i have one mesh for this one all right so let's continue let's create one box here and then one cylinder okay just like that let's click the box and then the cylinder and then click append so i can also change the first input asset so here you can see my first input asset was the box here or and the last input asset was the sphere okay you can also combine more than two of course uh, but if i put the first input asset let's let's try to save this and let's put it box test okay and this is my box test it's here so remember this so now that i want to do is click here on the box click on append and my first input asset is the box text so what i can do is accept okay and now this one will change now this will be the a new asset haven't been created but this one has been updated that's one thing so i can put more assets here like this one and i choose this and then choose this one click append and i have a bunch of options here i can delete the sources here like i have been doing but what i can also do is keep the first source or keep the last source or keep both sources or hide it for example i will hide them okay click accept and now when i move this this will be my new mesh but the other one hasn't been deleted it's just hidden so i will click ctrl h and now you will see that i have my asset here okay let's create this one and then let's create another one here and another one here okay so what we can also do is select all this append and we can keep the sources or keep the first source or keep the last source so if i keep the sources here see when i move it now this one because it's the we're using the new instead of creating a new asset we're changing the first one these two stay here but like if i wanted to have something like this have three assets here append and i don't want to change the first input asset i just want to create a new one and i want to keep the sources i just click accept and then move it and this one will be my new asset and this one is the previous one so this is the append tool extremely useful if you want to combine meshes okay let's take a look at the duplicate tool so by default let's say fall let's replace this map okay so 
by default, if you check the content browser, control B, and let, let's create a new one. Let's let's create a sphere here. Okay. Let's control B to check where it is. It's here. Okay. So if you want to duplicate this asset, uh, one of the ways is right click and then duplicate. And this will be my new asset. Okay. And it will be here. So there is a better way to do that. And it's with the duplicate tool. So if I do this, and I, I can either delete the sources like before. I can change the name, for example, as for new. I can hide them and I can click accept. And if I move this, control H, you will see the previous one is this one. And here is my new asset here. We don't need to go to the content browser to duplicate objects. And this is extremely useful. Because if you want to modify a mesh, uh, make sure if you are duplicating this one, uh, because otherwise you will replace all the instances. So this is a very good way to duplicate meshes. Of course, you can still go to the content browser, but, but this way is much faster. Now let's take a look at the poly editor tools. So the poly edit, it's a way to modify the mesh and do modeling operations in a very simple way. Polygroups are condensed between groups of faces. So, for example, you may have a lot of triangles here and this is very hard to choose. So polygroups are extremely good at choosing faces. Let's take a look at the poly edit here first. Uh, the first thing is like you can show the wireframe. For example, you will see that actually I have more subdivisions here but the polygroup condense all the face here all right so uh, the polygroups don't work for each face it grows uh, it works as a group of faces that's one thing to notice if i click on this you will see that i have a gizmo and i can scale it i can move it and i can also rotate it if i want okay the gizmo can be from the geometry or from the object okay so we, you can lock the rotation or things like that for example i can lock the rotation here okay and i can click on here and i can just move my mesh in anywhere i want i can also snap to world grid and this will snap my faces to to my world grid okay that's one thing to notice and of course you can also select faces here select edges or vertices for example i can select the edge here very carefully okay let me remove the wireframe for a moment and i can move this edge i can also select a vertex and i can move it if you don't want to select one of these selections you can just unselect faces and now you won't be able to select the faces only the edges or the vertices okay by default it's always useful to select this uh, edge loops allows you to select all the loops uh, uh, by default we don't have one uh, so let's we will check that in the feature and select edge rings uh, it will be like 3ds max or blender uh, i'm a max user so i'm not sure if blender has this it will create like a a ring around here just like this right and if you choose this one it will create or it will go all the way down to select all the edges in the ring okay so uh this is the most basic operations you can do uh, another thing is the extrude. You can click on extrude, and you will see that I have. I can click on this, and I can extrude here. And I can also click on extrude, and here I can change the axis. For example, the local C axis. I can extrude it up, right? Or. Um, I can just change anyone. So this is extremely useful. 
uh, I click escape notice that if I click escape none of my changes will apply so if I want something like this I want to move it and let's not select the edge loops and rings only, I only want to use this one so let's say I want something like this I need to click accept so be aware of that so another thing is the offset for example I can do something like this and I can change the offset by down or up just like that and I can do something like this okay another one is the insert inset so if I click on this one and click the inset you will see that I can select the face here that I want to inset I can use of this one here or I can move it like here or I can extrude it if I want it okay the next one is the outset it's basically what it does create an outset for this one and you can of course move this one's here okay uh, the next one is delete you can delete faces like this or you can also use the delete button right you can also select all this and delete well, not this selection only this one okay you can delete the faces you don't really want okay next is the merge is basically it will merge them into a single face here and cut faces for example i want this to be another face um i can just cut here and here okay see if i can make it right except let's try to do it again with a with another mesh this one is quite messy so i can just cut faces I can just click here and then click again and you will add a loop here okay um, recalculate normals it's very simple flip again like flip normals like for example this one you can flip it accept and you will flip the normal here and basically all the basic operations uh, for example I can delete this face and I can fill hole for example here fill hole and I it will I it will fill the hole okay or I can move something like this okay and put pattern Okay, uh, this one is already straight, so you don't need to worry about it. And of course, weld vertices. Uh, another thing you can do is to change the UVs if in one of the faces, for example, UVs, planar projection, and you will check where you want the UVs. First click and then drag it like this. And then you will have different UV sets for different uh, poly faces. Okay, so this is the poly edit. It's very simple, actually, very simple operations, but it's very powerful in a way that you can deform your meshes very easily. Okay, let's take a look at the poly deform. So the poly deform is a little bit different from the poly edit. So this one has less options, but what it allows you is to select one poly group. And then just move it really you can do something like this okay you can move really all your polygroups okay so i can go move up or down or i can move here and you will see it will interpolate and the reason it's interpolating is because i have more edges here so if i want it to be linear i can just drag here and move it like this so this is a free way to modify your mesh and it's very useful for example you move this one and you want to move it like this so it's a very simple way to deform your meshes and 
extremely useful actually so another things you can do is of course you can rotate or scale uh, rotate or transform sorry so you can select one of these this ones and you can rotate I personally use the translate a lot but if you want to rotate that's also fine and of course you can show the wireframe like always and it's not to work great so you can have your mesh snapping to the grid in the world all right okay so let's do the edge insert now so the edge insert is very simple i will just click on one edge and i will click here for example on another one and i will create an edge i can also put, go here and go to another vertex and notice that they will snap here like here it's not to the edges or it's not to the vertices automatically and this one can be useful in case for example you want to extrude some of this like for example poly extrude extrude this one like this you can model the faces inside another face and then modify them as you need so uh, this is very simple actually Edge insert is just what the name implies. It's just click and draw an edge, and that's all what it does. Okay, so you can also have the re triangulate one, but you know, uh, you don't really need it for now, and that's it. All right. Um, before that, of course, there is a vertex tolerance. When you cut mesh, they will snap to the vertex. So if you change the vertex tolerance, like you will be able to snap easier your your mesh. Okay. Okay. Let's take a look at the loop insert. The loop insert it's just what the name implies. It will create an edge uh, with a loop. It will just go all around your mesh here and you can create loops very easily and of course it will create a polygroup so if i go here i can just select these two extrude them select this one and move it and so on so uh the poly loop it's uh very useful if you want to add loops and of course it will depend on the geometry if it's too bad and the loop won't go all the way through but for most simple shapes it works quite nice okay let's take a look at the booleans so let me create a box here okay and also a sphere and i will put it here okay uh, booleans are operations that you do in 3d modeling to sub subtract or add some surfaces so booleans by default will be uh engraved you cannot select them in order to use them you need to select at least two okay so if you check the boolean you will see what it does first it will do an operation of a minus b so if you do a b minus a you will be like the second one you choose is the b so minus a is the operation it will subtract all the polygons that are here intersecting and it will create new geometry based on the intersection so you can also do the intersect this is the one that is intersecting or you can use the union so it will create a new geometry so here you don't have nothing and here you will create a new geometry for this so this is what the boolean does and it's extremely useful because you can actually move this one and place it in any any position you want you can also scale it if you want or move it to another location and always you can change the mode here by minus a inter intersect b union etc so it's pretty useful especially if you want to um, create destruction assets so one thing to keep in mind here is that here you will create a new asset so here this is the output options that we had when we 
append or duplicate options this is the same so i will not go through this again but basically you can select a new asset or first input asset for example the box will be replaced or the sphere will be replaced so in my case i will just create a new asset and keep the sources click ok and you will see that my box and my sphere is still here and here is my new asset so this is booleans and it's extremely useful to create very complex geometry booleans in unreal engine 5 are extremely powerful in a sense that uh, they don't crash the engine um, it never happened to me and i use them a lot in most 3d applications booleans will crash the program but in unreal it's pretty nice so i highly recommend you to use it. okay so now that we see the boolean let's see the mesh cut the mesh cut it's a little bit different so a, in a sense it doesn't have as many options so let me create a box here and another sphere okay and we will do the same to show you what the mesh cut does so if i click here and then this one let me scale this down a little bit click the box and then click the sphere and then go to mesh cut so it looks like it does the same right it does a intersection uh, but we don't have the other options right um, but uh, let i will show you when i click accept when i move the box and this one you will see that i still have my mesh here and it doesn't look like nothing but here you can have the mesh here and of course uh, you, you can add some physics to it or something so you can have like this wall is destroyed and this is the remainings of this wall so that they, they it looks something like this like this this thing got destroyed but you know here is the missing piece so this is the mesh cut and it's a little bit different and it's also extremely useful all right let's take a look at the sub d modeling sub d is a term for subdivision so if i have my box here and i click on sub d you will see that my box turns into a sphere so you have a subdivision level here for example zero will be well one is the minimum two and three so the higher the subdivisions the more smooth your surface will be but also it will have more polygons so another thing you can change here is the subdivision algorithm so cladmul kalark is a very popular one and i highly recommend it you can also use vlinear and it will have a different result and you're going to use the loop to have another different result so you can also have changed the normals and everything um, but and also you can change the the cage like if you want to see your original mesh this is how it looks like so if i want to have some like nice uh, smooth edges i can go to my loop insert like we did before and I can just put them here and I will just put them on the areas that I want my mesh to be smooth uh, not here but only in these areas okay so when I click accept and I go to sub D you will see that these parts will be sharp because they will subdivide here here I will have more polygons but it won't be as smooth whereas this part when I don't have much polygons it will interpolate from this part this and this three points will make an average and it will put it here so because the average here is between this and this point and this point then it only does a small smoothing so this is a very common operation to use if you want to use sub modeling you certainly can in unreal so this is the way to do it all right so let's take a look at triangle selection so if we go to our modeling tools and then select tree model tools have the triangle selection so i have a mesh with some subdivisions here so 
the first thing is that you will see a brush like green stroke so you can change the size of the brush if you want like make it bigger or smaller and i can click on this and as i drag the mouse i can paint which triangles i want to choose and also if i shift click and shift click and shift click i can delete the ones i want i can click and hold it to paint and i can also shift click to remove some triangles here so there are a couple of things to do here like for example the selection mode it can be a brush it can also be this is one of the most common ones i use i won't go through all of them but all connected is very useful one uh let's go here to the selection and click clear no more things uh all in group for example this polygroup is one selection this polygroup is one selection and this polygroup is another selection so if you want to deselect the polygroups you just need to shift click and it will deselect the whole polygroup okay shift click and then shift click then uh, you can select by material of course this one has the same material but if you have multiple materials you can select by material here and then shift click and you can also select by uv island this one is a uv island this one is a uv island and so on okay so these are the most common ones and of course within angle for example one or 90 uh, in this case the surface is very smooth so we you don't really will see a difference but let's just select back to the brush okay so um you can put the group or material id change the color of this you can also show the points here okay for each triangle or you can put by uv island you can check the uv islands here have different polygroups and of course the polygroups uh it's a coincidence that is the same uv island but if you have different polygroups it will show something different so or you can choose down to use it as it is i like to put it by group or by yeah basically by group so i can know uh, which polygroup i am affecting but if it's a little bit like uh, annoying you can always go back to normal okay so uh another thing you need to do is the selection edits for example i can i already showed the clear one i can click here clear i can also select all i can invert the selection which is basically here invert and it will select the ones i didn't choose i can grow my selection to expand my selection i can clear it I can grow like this and we will go to the neighbors basically and it will go to the neighbors again and then keep growing the selection like this i can also optimize my selection here to optimize selection for example this optimize is usually is usually like if you have more polygons it will smooth it out to make it look a little bit better and expand to connect it basically all of these faces are connected so uh all of this turn red click here largest component by area and largest component by tree count uh this ones i really that never use uh then you got the mesh edit you can delete triangles for example i can choose these two and i can delete them and i can i can also choose these two and type the delete button it does the same then i can do the separate triangles which is different from disconnect triangles separate triangles will separate it into another mesh so I, if i click accept you will see that now i have another mesh here uh, disconnect triangles on the other hand if i go to triangle selection i can select this and disconnect the triangles they are still part of the mesh it's just that they are not you know um, they are not connected they are not weld okay so you can also flip the normals if you want just like we have done many times you can select all this 
and then leave the normals. And you can also create a polygroup here for this one. So if you want to go to poly edit, you can move this. And because this is not connected, you will not affect the other ones. So this is basically the triangle selection in a, in a nutshell. It's basically a tool to select triangles and create different groups and to do some small operations like separate the triangles or create different meshes. Uh, this kind of mode is actually not used to model. To model, we have the poly edit, which is much more intuitive and much easier to work with. But the triangle selection is used to select triangles, right? So let's take a look at the triangle edit. So the triangle edit, it's pretty much the poly edit. But instead of doing by polygroups, you do it by triangles. So for example, I can just select this triangle. And as you can see, it's much harder to work with because you're working at the triangle level. But you can still do the, uh, the same operations. You can extrude some things. You can inset, like select this one. Uh, let's select again. Oops. Something I'm doing here. Oh, the inset button is too, too far. Let's cancel this. So triangle edit is basically the poly edit but at the triangle level so um, basically you will be able to do the same operations but uh, now you do it with a with a triangle okay so for example like this one you can fill the hole if you want and it does the same it's just as a little bit harder to work with compared to the poly edit mode you can select all of those at the same time and they will move but the triangle edit will only, if you want to do that same operation, you need to select all of them and then move them to have kind of that, like the same result. So uh, they're meant to be used in different purposes. For example, like if you are doing some terrain or something like that, then the triangle edit will work uh, pretty nicely since you can uh, easily move some vertices here and there. Uh, but uh, most of the time you will use the poly edit more mode if you're doing some hard surface modeling uh, in most cases and use a triangle edit for very very specific cases so another important mode is the hole fill uh, in order to do this first we need to create a hole so let's go to our poly edit click here and delete and let's accept Okay, so the whole field will take care of all the holes in the in the model, actually. So if I click H field, which stands for whole field, I can just click here. I can clear my selection too. I can select all if I have more than one hole. Or I can just click on this one. And that's all it does, actually. And you have some statistics, for example. Um, Initial holes one, selected holes one, successfully filled one. And if it fails, uh, it, it will say if it failed to do the hole. And how many holes you have left, you have zero. There are no holes in this mesh. And for example, you can like select this mesh and do some holes here and there, like that. And instead of putting the holes each time like this and this and this what you can do is just click select all and there you go you have your holes ready another thing to notice is that the holes actually does the uvs these are not connected but at least it does a planar projection so you have some uvs when you do the holes now let's take a look at the plane cut um, the plane can with cut the mesh with the plane. So if I click on this, you will see that I have a grid here. And nothing will happen if I move it. Because uh, the plane only will cut the mesh to all directions. So if I rotate this, you will see that I'm cutting the mesh here. Alright. I can also keep both half with the space between here. So if I want it... It's extremely close i can just put zero or put one or two or you know have some kind of uh, 
uh, design to it if I if I want it. So uh, yeah, I can un un unclick this, uh, fill hole. If I don't want the hole there, I can I can check this and export separate pieces as new mesh. Of course, it, this can be a new mesh. I can also flip the plane to just have different sections of my model, right? So I can just accept, and this will update my mesh, and I have my new mesh here. And basically, this is the plane cut. So the next tool is the mirror one, and this one is very straightforward. So the mirror one will mirror the mesh according to the grid that is here. So if you want to move the grid, it will offset the mirror position. It will mirror an append or mirror existing if you only want one side or you want both sides. And the other thing is that you can have some presets. For example, you can put the left one, you can put the right one, you can go up, down, forward, and backward. So not only that, but you can rotate this and have something more unique. And as you mirror these things, uh, it will weld the mesh. So you don't need to worry about the topology anymore. And the mirror tool is extremely useful sometimes. And it's very straightforward. So remember, I personally, I always use the presets and update assets so if i want something like this then my new asset will be the mirror one okay let's take a look at the holy cut so let me create a box here and this one is very straightforward the poly cut will do a hole based on this axis and it will cut through the mesh so by default it's a circle and you can change the width, for example, have something like this. And you can also move it into another position. And even if when it's outside the bonds, then it will only cut the parts that are intersecting with the mesh. Okay, so that's a good throw. You can also like insert polygon. You can insert a polygon here in case like you want something like this, or you can trim inside or you can trim the outside something like this just to have like the all only the two intersections it can be useful if you want it by default cut through that's the magic here you can also change the scale for example something like this you want to change the scale of this one and you can also change it to another form such as the square you can change the polygon scale the width and you can change to rectangle, change a uh, non-uniform square, or the round rectangle, where you can change the radius to have fully radius will be like a circle, zero will be the square. So having something like this could work. And also you can change the subdivisions if you increase it. Of course, you will have more subdivisions there. It's very useful. And the last one is the custom one. Um, you need to draw a custom polygon. So let's cancel. And here in the polycut, polycut, you can do custom. Click on the draw polygon here. And you will draw something like this. For example, let's put a triangle so it can be very obvious. And now you draw your own shape. And you can click accept if you want. Or let me cancel this and let's draw something that it's outside the bonds. So let's do the polycut, draw polygon, and then let's do something with a more interesting shape that we could use here. Something like this. Okay. And this is much more interesting. We can do something like this. And of course, we can change the scale. And change the width or something like that but what well, well, is custom you only change the the scale and there you go now you have 
your polygon cut. Uh, very fun tool to use. So let's move on. All right, let's take a look at the trim. Uh, for the trim, you need another mesh here. So let's grab this one. Let's put it here, just like that. And it's a little bit different from the Boolean. If you do this, you will see that basically the intersection is removed. Okay, and you can trim A or trim B. And basically, uh, it will create a hole here. So you can remove the inside or remove the outside. But in any case, the intersection will only create a plane, not a closed shape. All right. So, of course, you can do the same. You can move this one around. And, of course, you can create a new asset or change it to a new to only the first input asset or the last one to create your assets. And then click accept. And then you have your new mesh here. So this one um, can be useful sometimes when you don't want to have some hidden holes here or something like that. Um, to optimize your geometry can be a little bit useful, but to be honest, I never be using it, uh, but it's there if you want it. Okay, so now let's go to the deform options. And I will handle these three sculpts here, uh, actually these two. And in order to do that, I will import a mesh from Megascans. I already have it here. I will just drag this one and put it here. And of course, I can fill this up a little bit if I want. So this mesh has a lot of triangles. You don't see it because it's nanite. But if you want to see them, go to leap mode, nanite, and then go to triangles. And there you go. You can see there are a lot of triangles here. So um, this sculpt allows you to basically sculpt in Unreal. So if I click on this one, and there are some ways to make this one look uh, you know, be faster uh, by the allowing nanite and uh, lumen. We don't want the global illumination, and also we don't want to generate distant fields. Uh, in if you want to make it faster, but um, let's just go through this. So the first one is the size, of course, and you can use the brackets to make it bigger or smaller, or you can use the slider here and you can just sculpt here so let me do something here let me just sculpt something here flow rate will be basically like less smooth so if i put let me put something all 0.4 so i cannot basically oh but with this one with the flow rate on one like works much better here it's basically much more smooth. It's like this one is more bumpy, this one is more smooth. Okay. And the spacing, of course, like if you want to make it more space, have have some bumps here, you can do this. Okay. So put the spacing back to zero. And of course the laziness be like super smooth like this. Okay. There you go. Very nice. So you can have like very interesting patterns that you can use here just by just a laziness mouse okay so um the first mode is the sculpt mode and i won't go through all of them but i will go through the most important ones uh one of the most important ones is the move tool so if i make this one a little bigger i can move the mesh a little bit just like this i can make this guy is stronger, like stronger muscles, like this. Or you can increase the size of the pecs, something like that. Very strong. Okay. And another one uh, is the smooth. Of course, this will smooth the mesh a little bit. And uh, name is very straightforward. Okay. And another one is the inflate. So let me one small. So this will make some bumps here, like inflating the tool. Okay. And then you hold shift. Really. 
control can go negative. So let me try to sculpt here. Sculpt normal. If I go control, I go negative. If I go normal, I go positive. Okay. And the next one is the pinch. I can grab one of these ones here. I can just pinch it, make it sharper. Or I can reduce this one and make this one sharper like this here, like that. Okay. And then I can choose the smooth here, make sure my mesh is working. And now I have a sharper edge here. Okay. Uh, another one is the flatten. So if I increase the size here and I want to flatten this area, I can just go here and do something like this. And this one is very useful. Like if you want to make some rocks or something like that, uh, it, it can work very nicely. And we can just flatten all this area. Okay. And we also have the plane normal, something like this. Okay. Very, very useful too. Like if you want to do some rocks or something, I'm playing uh, from the viewpoint here. Depends on the angle we will of the camera, we will do the playing uh, sculpting here. Okay, um, this one basically sculpting with a lot of a lot of prank. So that's basically what the what the tool does. And of course, you can have an alpha mask. Like uh, you can import your own mask. You can have your own brushes, and it's you can have a really nice result so uh this sculpt mode uh if i go back to the normal one uh, let's go to move the problem with this sculpt mode is that i don't create new geometry and for example i want to move this one here and uh, you notice that when i move this one here my vertices are basically getting lower here and i really don't want this stretch so let me accept this now and it will take a while to compile because it does the nanite okay almost done there you go so this is our new mesh and see it's the form okay so let's do the dynamic sculpting now i decided to change the mesh because the other one was really really heavy i don't recommend you to sculpt a very heavy mesh unless you really need to but this one is very, very simple actually compared to the other one. So, uh, this sculpt, this sculpt is uh, the dynamic sculpting. And what you can do here is you can move, and actually it will create polygons. Just like that. And you can, this one is very useful for trees or things like that. So, if you want to do this, and you can do the plate here but more polygons just like that it's very useful like if you want to create trees or things like that but of course it's very very powerful and it's the same one we use like in ZBrush we'll be able to use this kind of tool just move it a little bit okay and of course you have the same thing as always like you have the flatten here uh, the difference is like you're um you're modifying the topology so the thing is um it may screw the uvs it may not but it may it may like for example this one but in any case this will be screwed so uh, just to show you, if I do the poly edit, uh, I mean the UVs. Let's, let's let's check if the UVs are here. Uh, very easily. Just go to the same edit. Uh, you will see these are the original UVs, so they got stretched a lot. But I mean, uh, you can use this tool to deform objects, and especially with rocks or things like that. Like you don't need to modify the mesh a little bit. 
so you can just move it a little bit and to fix things and it will work, work perfectly so that's it for the sculpting here um the next one of course is the smooth surface with where it will just smooth the polygons if you, if you really want to but in my case i don't really i don't really use it that much like for example here i can use the box and then i can use the form the smooth and i can just reduce the steps a little bit it, and because i don't have any geometry it will it will really destroy my mesh but in any case um these are the sculpting tools are extremely useful in very particular situations um, the next one is the offset for this one so i'm cutting this all this in the sculpting tool set because it's kind of like deforming the mesh but for this one it will just like inflate the whole the whole mesh and also create a shell something like this and of course you can increase the number of steps or you can have something like this looks very cute actually if you are making a like a stylized thing so uh now that you know the sculpting tools uh these tools are extremely good to deform meshes uh the sculpting tools are very specific but if you want to do more complex operations then we have the warp and the lattice and the displays so we're gonna do that next okay so now let's take a look at the deformers um for the deformers we have the warp node the lattice one so the warp node will essentially put a stick here and basically warp the mesh around it so you can change the intensity of the warp the degrees and the direction of it you can do it here with the handles you can also do it here in the bend degrees and this is very useful like if you are creating some rows and you want some curves then the warp node works extremely good uh, the other one is the upper bone and the lower bone the upper bone will tell how much influence you want of the warp the upper side and of course the lower one and the, the upper one will be something so for example if you want to put zero here then this part will remain straight and it will have a smooth transition until the next one uh, rotates so this is the rat mode and of course you can move the gizmo to have like different pivot points will have different results for example let's put 100 here and we can move it so depending on the pivot point we will have a different result and of course you can change the blending here this is extremely useful you can also rotate this to bend the mesh in a different direction just like this and you can have some interesting results here now the next one we need to use for deform the mesh is the lattice the lattice will add some points to the mesh and it will move the vertices that are closest to these points so if i select these points in the corner i will move the vertices that are close to here so i can select the middle ones take this ones and then move it here and of course if you have a lot of points let's accept this and let's do it again let's just have we can try try, try to change the axis like for example the x one will have like three by three by three and personally i like to use three three by three by three because it's less points to worry about so you can have something like like all of those and just move it here and you see that the transition is very rough and the reason is we're using the interpolation type for linear so if you if you change to the cubic one and you do it again uh, you will have a much more smooth transition so you can move the points and then you can deform the mesh freely 
This one is particularly very useful uh, when you want to make very specific change to your mesh, but you don't want to move the vertices. All right, we're gonna take a look at the displace mode. The displace mode will allow us to displace our mesh based on different properties. So in order to do this, we're gonna create a rectangle and we're gonna put some subdivisions on it, like something like uh, maybe 100, uh, 100 by 100. That should be enough to be complete. Okay, so now you have a lot of subdivisions here. Now, um, when we put this place, you will see that it will do some subdivisions. It will increase the polygon. We can decrease the subdivisions here, like one, two, just put one for now. We can increase the intensity, like 50 or one or two, to have something like very soft, if that's what you want and also increase the subdivisions here of course you can change the random zip to something like it will have different results in the noise okay so let's put the default of 10 for now it's one on one or even zero okay put one so um what you have here is different types of noises and different noises will have you know different properties for the pearly noise there are different types of noise that you want to play with so let's click cancel and let's go back to the original one go back to the modeling tools go back to this place and here let's play with the pearly noise the frequency will be how much the noise is repeated so if i put like one you will have a lot of frequency so if I put 0 0.001, you have less frequency. So, and different index will have different results, like 0 0.1 here, 0 0.05, 0 0.05. And you see, I can play with all the index, like something like this, small. And this one, this one can be like more intense like this and the frequency is lower have some kind of bobby thing and you have different types of noises for example you have the sine wave um, for the sine wave you have different properties for example you can change how many wave you have so basically from zero to one will something like this and of course you can change the phase shift right basically offset the, the direction of of the sine wave if you want to do it. something like this very cool to have the other one is the random noise of course it, this is just <laughs> random noise can be anything and the next one is a constant I, I really don't use it so one one of the apps that I want to show you is the textual one so for in order to do that i already have a material here from megascans let's put this one here and i want to add some bumpiness to it so what i'm gonna do is to go to this place and you will see that if i go to the pearly noise i'm losing the shape of my brick so what i want to do is a random noise uh, i mean the texture 2d map and for the texture 2D map, we need to specify a map. Megascans come from with these textures here, called the mask. And if we check the channels individually, you see the red is the ambient occlusion, the green is the roughness, and the blue, the displacement map. And what I did was extract the displacement map, put it in Photoshop, and then import it again so we can use it. In the future, this won't be necessary. Uh, it's already working in the branch on Git from a real engine 5 but for now we need to use it so in order to use it we just need to drag this one and just put it here and you will see now that my mesh is actually following the displacement direction of my texture 
and of course I can change the displacement intensity if I want something like 20 or something very subtle like 1 or 2 or 3 and you can have something really nice there you go and with this you can create really really nice surfaces okay you can put very evident like 25 that's a little bit too much 10 maybe maybe 8 is a right spot for this and you can click accept if you want and because the texture is styling you can always alt click and move this one here and you can do the same and you have your styling texture working perfectly all right so this is the dip displacement tools it's very useful to detail surfaces and uh, we're going to use it uh, for detailing walls and things like that um so it's one of the tools that i love to use most and this is the way to use it okay so let's take a look at the transform tools the transform tools allow us to do operational scenes that are real that typically will require us to leave the editor to go to other 3d modeling application so these are the most important tools the align tool the pivot point and the bake transform well, let's take a look at those first let's start with the pivot point because it's very straightforward the pivot point will allow you to change the position of the pivot of a mesh and put it anywhere you want for example i can put it here if i click accept my mesh will automatically change its pivot point and you don't need to export it and import it again so the pivot point comes with a handful of useful tools it has some presets for example you can align to the center to the bottom to the left to the back and so on and you can also align to the world origin here in case you want your meshes to be on zero 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 all right so the pivot point becomes extremely useful when you want to change the pivot point of one mesh. Just keep in mind that changing this will update all the instances. All right. The next one is the align. So let's grab a cylinder and let's put it here. So the cylinder will align to the box based on some of the parameters will give or we can make the box align to the cylinder it, this is very useful when we want to make things snap perfectly so in order to get the align tool you need to select both of them so let's say let's say i select the box first and then the cylinder and now when i align this two the first thing is that both of them are combined and the box position is the center okay so instead i want to align to the first selected okay and this one will align to my box and i will align to z y and x and i can put a different position for example i can align to the bottom one okay or i can align to the top or i can align to the left and so on and so on and you can also do it with the last one instead of aligning the cylinder you can do the box or you can combine those to have a middle point between the two of them now the last one is a very important one and that is the bake transform tools the bake scale rotation it's extremely important because usually you will do operations in a mesh for example you're rotating like this and then you want to do something like this and let's say you have a column and you want to put it duplicate it like this the problem with modeling this way which is very common in 3d modeling operations is that the transform is not the same if you see these numbers the, the scale values are one one and six the rotation values are quite different from zero so what this means is that if i try to find my asset here and i put it here you will see that i don't have the same one and the reason is i'm only modifying the transform so this is where this is where the transform bake transform 
comes very handful. So in order to do that, you need to select this one and then select the bake. And then you will just click accept. And notice, <clears throat> sorry, notice that the next, the columns here are very different. And the reason is the transform is not the same. So what you can do is reset this to zero and one and zero at one. Okay, so the original position is this one. If I want to drag this one, then of course my mesh have changed. All right, and my original scale is now one and not six. This is very helpful. All right, so let's take a look at the mesh operations. So the first one is to simplify. I have a mesh here with a lot of triangles and Usually you want to reduce the triangles and the best way is to use the simplify option. When we use simplify, uh, it will try different algorithms to finish it. And you can see how many triangles and vertices you have. For example, you can put 100 and of course we have like 30,000 triangles. And if we want the half, we will have 15,000. And if we want like 10%, 1%, like you can really simplify a lot. Okay, so different options here will give you a different results. Some of them are better, but requires a lot, uh, some extra time. But to be honest, I haven't really uh, uh, tried, like I haven't had any issue with the, uh, with the better ones. So if you try like UE standard or existing positions, uh, usually they will do like a better job, like minimal shape preserving. This one is the best one, especially for this kind of thing. It's the one that will tell you like, even if I put like 50, it will check the angles. And if the mesh is flat, then it will do a nice job. So of course this one is the fastest one, but also uh, it's the one with less uh, results so feel free to play with this um, this one we don't really need for now uh, we're just gonna have a glance of the simplify uh, so let's click accept another one is the remesh so remesh unlike like simplify remesh will unify all the triangles um, basically do a remesh the operation, right? So it doesn't matter what you had, when you put remesh, it will have new triangles on each surface. And of course, here, um, you can specify the number of triangles you want. For example, you want 10 or you want 500. It will try to put all the triangles more or less the same size here. And uh, this is quite useful if you want to displace this with the displace tool. So you ha have uniform distribution on the triangles uh, and it's it's really really nice so the other one is the weld so let's create a let's create a sphere here something like this okay and what we're gonna do is to triangle select let's select this one like this and we will do disconnect triangles okay so now um, all my triangles are disconnected so if I go to poly edit or, or if I go to let's, let's try the triangle selection, you, you will see that this these triangles are, are different. Okay. So what I can do here is use the weld one. So you will see in the weld one that the ones I disconnect are white. So I can just click accept. And now when I click weld again, see there's nothing here. It's it's working as expected. Yes. So if we go to the triangle selection and then select uh, not triangle edit, triangle selection, and then go to select all connected. Now everything is connected. Okay. Let's do the same here. Go to triangle selection, go to brush. And this one will, will disconnect the triangles. 
and then we'll go to triangle selection and select all connected you will see that this one is disconnected so just when we put the weld one let's see where i can find it there we go then click accept and now let's go to our triangle select all connected and now you have everything there so the next one is the remove hidden triangles from selected meshes um this one is uh, a little bit of a special one so for example i will i will show you the merge one first so the merge one i will like put a cylinder here like this okay and i will put it here so here the intersections between these two um actually you don't see these faces so what i will do is to merge this here there you go uh let's go here mesh operations merge okay and uh, here you will see that my mesh here inside disappears so of course you have the same operations you have there and everything so let's let's just accept and now we don't have any hidden triangle okay so what the let's go to the jacket one we'll make sure this one is also not here so uh just making sure of that okay then the project okay let's let's try the project so the project will basically morph one sphere well, one object into another one so for this one you may need to put some subdivisions so let's start with this one so we will click the first one and then we will click the second one and then we can click project okay uh you what you will see is that it will try to move the vertex in a way that you match the same topology and it does quite a good job actually it creates new geometry but you know it's usually used when for example you're baking objects and you want to make sure the low poly and the high poly are pretty much the same the project mode will help you to do that okay so this is it for the mesh operations next one we will go to the voxel operations okay now let's take a look at the voxel operations voxels are basically pixels but in 3d and voxels are very useful when you want to create new topology and not worry too much about the 3d constraints that normally polygons have so let's let's try to create a cube first okay so if you create a cube let's create two of them okay what you can do with this is to create a voxel here for example you will go here to voxel operations hit box wrap and now you will create new topology the voxel count will be the density of the mesh for example if i lower this to 32 you will have a much lower mesh here that you can use and of course look at this you have a nice sharp edges here too and you can also do the auto simplify and what this will do is to simplify the faces that don't need polygons okay so uh, another thing you can do is you can well threshold well that's when we have two objects but basically what's the difference between this so you can see that the voxel mesh is always very smooth kind of like that so if when you have something like this uh, the voxels uh, operate in a different way than boolean so if i choose this one and then choose this one and let's go to box cells operations you can blend selected meshes and what they would this will do is to blend them you see when i go here i create new topology kind of like the boolean but in reverse where where instead of subtracting this i'm adding the geometry and i'm actually merging them it's like combining them and creating new topology and not only that i can change the size 
the resolution so I can have a sharper one so I can create new meshes that actually have real topology here like this of course you can change the blending mode for example the blend power you can put like one to be more smooth or 0.1 or 5 to be more sharp or 10 uh, 2 is a nice number and of course the fall off it will increase the blend fall off and the blend power can be something like one or two and of course you have the union or you can have the subtract mode which basically will do the same but with the subtract mode and it will create new topology so for this one let's click accept here and now we have our voxel mesh um you can see it creates a nice natural transition between the two meshes so this is very useful if you want to create organic environments you can use boxes to block out your level and then use the voxel mesh to quickly have some really nice shapes so let's take a look at another one here let's put another cube here just like this okay and this let's just move it a little bit here like that and what i want to do is to merge these two so if i click on those two i can use the voxel merge and you will see that i have like a it will combine all this and even if this is far it will try to match this one so you can try to change the vertex count like 32 or 64 or something like that and of course you can do the auto simplify and it will simplify the faces that you don't need okay can click ok and you can also have the box warp what this will do is to basically offset uh, usually this thing you will do when you want to bake objects or something like that and you can use this as a cache so this one is the original one and this one is the offset one of course you have like delete contract close and open so different kind of, of options for this and of course you have the box wrap preprocess but to be honest uh most voxel operations kind of work like the same and of course you have the boolean let's choose let's this time a sphere you can use the boolean here so let's choose these two and instead of using this boolean we're going to use this one and of course nothing has happened because we haven't really intersected these two but what we can do is to put it here just like this and click this one the voxel one and then this one and then we will do the boolean and now you can see that it's working and you can change it like change the boolean the intersect or the union one where we will unify everything here only the parts that we are seeing and of course you can change it with anything you want and there you have a uh, boolean operation with the voxels so the voxels are pretty safe in a way that is very freeing to add any kind of geometry and you can create really really complex shape with the voxels so the next one we're going to do is to take a look at some of the attributes not all of them but some of them are pretty important so let's take a look at that next all right so let's take a look at the attributes the attribute inspector is basically some operations you can do to change the attributes of a model. A model can have several attributes such as the normal maps, uh, the normals, the tangents, and the vertex, and all of this uh, are part of the 3D model. So the attributes will allow you to take a look, take a closer look at what are the attributes that you have. One of this is the wireframe of course uh, you can also take a look at the uv seams for example these are the uv seams of this 3d model from megascans okay then you have the normal seams the normal vectors this will help you to check the direction of the normals since this will allow you to have a different shading in your model okay you can have like the uv scenes the tangent vectors also of course helps a lot too 
okay but this is only to keep in mind how your mesh is composed of so basically some operations you can do here are for example the normals and i will choose another mesh for this for example this one so i will put the mesh here and I, let's go to the normals here and what i can do is to put a normal threshold here and i can change it to something like this what this means is that the normals will change uh, little by little so let's just duplicate this uh, the normals will change depending on the direction of what the vertex are pointing to so this face and this face it's different because they are flat but if you want to make more roundy ones all we need to do is to let's create another one here just like this okay so we have to and what we will do change the normals for this so let's go to the normals here in operation and change the normal here normal threshold okay so once you do that you will see that this one have a different shading this one is more smooth it's like a it's like a ball and if you check the normals here like let's go here to the inspector normal vectors you will see that i have something like this very sharp and if i go here and check the inspector you will see that i only have one normal pointing here that is the average of these three points that i had on the other one the same for the tangents like you don't really need to to use it to be honest for now then generate new polygroups based on the normals of course you can put like depending on the uh, normal angle you will have different polygroups that's something to think about and let's, let's keep going then the paint new mesh polygroups of course can paint some polygroups here oh and here i have some polygroups and now when you the poly edit you will be able to paint polygroups more easily you know change them okay so actually this is a very special tab but what i want to show you is the material edit so um let's go back to here to this one and what i want to do is to change the materials here so you know how i'm gonna do that is i'm gonna select the triangles i want and i will select by uv island i will select this one and then i will go to materials and i will click a new one and i will try to select another material let's try to select this one click here and then selected material press index one now you don't press accept now what you need to do is to assign the selected material here and now your mesh has two materials one is for this id and another one is for the original one okay so this is a good way to add more materials to your mesh if you check here you will see that you see the two materials so this one is very important the next thing we're gonna do is to bake some textures okay so we're gonna bake that low poly model and a high poly model and we're gonna do that next all right so now we're gonna learn how to bake textures so this is a nanite mesh and it has a lot of triangles and let's say you want to simplify this but you want to use the traditional method of using a low poly and a high poly model so in order to do that we need to do some things uh, first let's go to the attribute editor for this one and it will take a while the first time because it's a very heavy mesh so let's take a look at the attribute editor just wait a little bit because it's gonna take some time 
and what we're gonna do is to optimize for editing okay so let's optimize for editing and this will and disable some settings that are need to be rebuilt rebuilt each time in order for the mesh to function correctly okay so now that we have our mesh uh, what what I want to do is to duplicate this one like this actually let me rotate this in order to be the same spot okay let's change the lining here okay so now this one we're gonna duplicate this this will be our low poly okay let's click accept and this will duplicate our mesh okay so now that we duplicate our mesh it's very heavy so what we need to do is just to make a low poly it will be very easy we just need to go to mesh operations and we could do a remesh if we want we could try let's try what happens if we do remesh and it will take a while so i will come back when it's processing okay so i will put 10,000 triangles like this let's see how it handles it okay so now that we have remesh this one let's click accept and this will give us our new mesh with new topology and we can actually simplify this one and we can use the minimal shape preserving wait a little bit okay Maybe use this one. This one looks fairly low poly. We can do like 10. Something like that. Okay, and there you go. Now, uh, sometimes, in this case, the remesh really made our preserve our UVs. Sometimes that's not the case. For example, if I want to use my box wrap, I will have something like this and and then i will lose my uvs and uh, usually you want to do this kind of operation so that you you don't want to have this kind of loading things so what what you can do is go to maybe this one and box wrap reprocess okay and then this one will handle the small dots okay so what you need to do and this one of, of course it create a hole you can do an auto uv something like that okay and of course before that we need to remesh this so let's simplify this and let's just put it like this okay so let's do the auto uv just like that and let's check the checkerboard if it's good or not try to normalize the world or noise scaling both are okay have a look click accept and looks like this could work okay it's not perfect uvs but it's something so what i want to do is to bake this this is my low poly. Actually, I will simplify this a little bit more. Actually, let's go back and let's not simplify it so much. Otherwise, uh, my low poly will be too different from the high poly. So let's simplify it, but it's just like 75%, just something like that. Okay. So now that we have this, from distance is most likely the same shape we click on this one and then we click on this one and then we will do a bake texture okay so now that we have bakes let's wait a little bit for processing 
And now you will see here that I have my normal map working, but it's very small. So what I want to do is to increase the resolution to something like 2048. And let's see how our normal map looks like. And now our normal map starts looking very nice. Let's increase the thickness like 10 in case we are missing some of the details of the rock. There you go. And maybe let's try 50. Okay, so it this looks like it works. So let's just click OK. And now, here we will have our normal map. We can put it here if we want. We have a new material. Okay, now this is the normal map that we baked. If we want to bake again, just bake this and we can bake the albedo map. So let's try to do that. Let's go here and we can do that texture to the image. And the source texture, of course, will be the cliff, this one. And it may work or it may not. It may look darker, as expected, it, it does. It does look darker. So just don't worry about it. Uh, it looks darker than what it should. Uh, normally, it shouldn't. You can also have the occlusion multiplier with like zero here or the base gray level, something like that. But for us, uh, now the normal map works fairly nice. So be aware of the albedo. The normal map works nice, but the albedo map uh, doesn't work as, as we will expect. So this is the way we bake textures inside Unreal and this one has much less polygons. We can try to create the nanite version of this one. Try to find it. Here you go. Nanite enable. And here when we go to nanite, visualize triangles, you will see that we have much less triangles here. Now you may or may not want to use this, but the tool is here. You can bake inside Unreal and you don't need to go to any other 3D modeling application. Okay, so now we are in the last part of this introduction to modeling inside Unreal Engine 5. The last thing we need to do is to take a look at the UVs. So by default, all the meshes come with some basic UVs, but there are some times you need to modify them. In the UVs tab, you will be able to select between different options to UV map your object. For example, I can try Auto UV, and this will have a different result. I can try to put this one, Normalize to World, or I can put No Scaling, or I can change the stretch here, something like this. Okay, so now that I have this, I can have different UVs. Now, if this one doesn't really fit your needs, you can try to unwrap this one. Well. So when if I unwrap it, it will look like this. And I can use the polygroups or the existing UVs if I want. Usually when you create different polygroups, you will have different UV island. So that can be helpful for you. Another thing you can do is to try to change the Unwrap type to conform up or minimum stretch. Different surfaces will give you different results. So try to play with this one. So another thing you can do is to check the preview. You can change the checkerboard or you can try to change the UV map size. Okay. You can also try to overwrite with another material. Let's say I want to use one of my surfaces here and I want to put it here. Now I can take a look of how my UVs are working. I can also change the scale here, like 2 or 3, to repeat my texture if I want it. I will just leave it on 1 for now, and I can just change uh, UV channel 0 for now. Okay, The project 1 will do a different thing. 
So depending on the surface, you will want to change the different projection, projection size like this, or you can scale it like Y or X. And if you have like a different shape, for example, like this cylinder, you can use the project mode. And instead of using the cube, you can use the cylinder. And now it will unwrap nicely. So if you put the checkerboard, it will look like this. And just try to make sure all the checkers are square. Another one is the scene editor. So let's try to put something like an auto UV, something like that. And let's try to do the scene editor. What we can do is to click here and drag here, just like this. There you go, enter. Click this one, and then click this one, and drag it, just like that. And then click this one and drag it, and you will be able to change the scene in any, any way you want. Another thing you, you have is the transform node. So this one, if you check this one, you will be able to scale the, your UVs or move them around in X or Y uh, position. So if you want to check how it looks with the original material or with the override material, you can take a look here. You can scale down or scale up if you want to increase or decrease the resolution. And this is a good way to try your textures. Let's try to apply this material here so we can have a look at how it looks like. Another thing you can do is to change the layout. Uh, by default, it will repack everything and put it in the 0 to 1 space. Or you can also transform this one to change from 1, 2, 3, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, or 1. Or you can also translate the UVs to rotate them in case you need the texture to be in another place so this really concludes the tutorial on how to use the modeling tools and also for the uv section this concludes our tutorial on the modeling tool thanks a lot for watching and remember that if you want to learn more we have more videos for people like you on our website make sure you check our tutorial on how to model an entire castle in unreal engine 5 and let us know in the comments what kind of video you would like to watch and we may make a video about it. Until next time.